and I think that I get out of it a little bit today. You know, we don't know sometimes where our life is going to take us, right? So, A, it involves maybe taking a risk, and B, it involves taking advantage of opportunity when it presents itself. Because if you don't, and you think about the life that you've lived up to this point, how many of you would be, or maybe not be, where you're at today because you didn't engage in some kind of risk, whether it was high or low, or you didn't take advantage of an opportunity? What you've done tonight, and what you've done today, and I know some of you who I've, I've recommended Rudy to, is not much risk. What you've done is you've taken advantage of a great opportunity. Because I've known Rudy now for a while, I know the kind of person Rudy is, and the great thing about Rudy is he's more concerned about your success than his own. Because you see, Rudy will be successful without you. But he's very, very excited about you becoming successful. So Rudy asked me to talk about implementation. And what I've noticed after all of these years, the ones that truly succeed within the system, because the system never lets anybody down, is implementation and execution and believing that the system right, is going to work, which I think in many cases leads up to a lot of that. How many people here feel that they're a procrastinator? A procrastinator. Or they procrastinate. Fair enough? No? Okay. Do you know that procrastination does not come from being lazy? It does not come from being um, unorganized. They have done studies on the fact that procrastination is a coping mechanism. You know you have to do something, but you know it's a lot more fun to do this over here, and so you don't do it. But the problem with procrastination is it eventually catches up with you. Because what happens is suddenly that deadline that you have two weeks to work on is now 24 hours away. And isn't it amazing how much you can get done in 24 hours? I, I'm going to share something from, from Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar always, you know, have you ever noticed how much work you can get done on the day before you leave on vacation? Quite a bit. And you know what Zig said? Just pretend every day you're leaving for vacation on the next day. When I coach people, a lot of the things that we run into is, Bill, you know, I'm, I'm, they're distracted. You know, the phone rang. I had to take care of this fire. I had to do this. I had to do that. So let me kind of share with you some things. Has anybody ever read the book, The Five Second Rule, from Mel Robbins? Okay. The Five Second Rule suggests that this is all about, part of it is activation energy, right? Have you ever noticed that the first time you do anything is always the hardest? Have you, all, have you ever noticed that sometimes it's just hard to start? You know, they use the analogies and trains, how much energy they use, to start until they get at their speed, or how much energy a plane uses until it gets to cruising altitude. It's that activation energy. And the reason, in many cases, that we don't want to do something is not because we made a logical decision, in many cases, not to do it. It's because we don't feel like doing it. Do you know that most decisions are based upon feeling more than logic? Have you ever talked to somebody who's getting ready to make a big decision and what do you say? Well, have you logically thought about it? Is this how it's going to be? Or do you look at them and say, well, how do you feel about that decision? You see, a lot, of it, a lot of it has to do with right here. So sometimes that holds us back from implementation and execution. Five second rule says, if you think about having to do something, go five, four, three, two, one, go. And just go. Don't question it. The studies show, and the reason you don't go backwards and go one, two, three, four, five, is because studies show that by second, six second, or seven second, your mind has talked you out of the ability to do it. But have you ever noticed that when you start a project, how great you feel about yourself getting that project done? And it happens every day, every day, every day, in everything, everything that we do. So, first of all, in your business, you know, Rudy talked about being an OSA, he talked about being a team leader. You know, 
It doesn't matter what you want to be, just be the best you could possibly be. Would you agree with that? I mean, this is a great industry, guys. So let me take you through, let me take you through some of these things. First of all, you have to have clarity. Rudy has given you a checklist. So how are you going to divide and conquer the checklist? Are you a single agent? Do you have somebody that can help you? Right? How are you going to delegate some of these things if in fact they have to be delegated? And if you can't, all is not lost. You know, I heard, I, I, I heard this singer say one time who after 80 years finally won an award, he said, you know what, the road to success sometimes just takes a little while. So how do you do it? How do you, how do you get yourself from waking up every morning and going, I gotta answer the phone, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Let me share with some things with you that I think can help you. Number one is you have to own your morning. Okay? Own your morning. When I wake up in the morning, I do not look at my email, I do not look at my phone. You know, here, here's the reality. I'm not a heart surgeon. There's nobody that's dying on the table with what I do for a living. Okay? And I do not check email until 9 o'clock. And I don't look at my phone until 9 o'clock. And here's why. From 5 to 7, those are my times where I get to spend time in silence, in prayer, in affirmations, in exercise, in reading. From 5 to 7, it's mine. And then from 7 to 8.30, 7 to 9, that's when I'm working on the business. Because in our business, right, what happens after 9 o'clock? Buyer shows up, contract comes in, phones start, I mean, things start to happen that create distractions. And that's what keeps you from doing it. And if you want your business to grow, you gotta work on it. Right? You've got to work on it. As a matter of fact, studies show that businesses that do not work on their business never grow and they never thrive. So it's just that plain and simple. That's why our business is loaded with so many people that work all day long but never get anywhere. Because they do the same things in and out every single day, but it's never systemized, it never makes any sense, and they don't own any part of the day at all. So when you're working on your business, you know, uh, you don't want the phone. You know, we, we talked about activation energy. Do you know that when you're starting to work on a project and bing, the email goes up, bing, the phone rings. When you walk away from that and answer that or take care of that, do you know how long it takes for you to come back and start again on the project you were working on? Do you realize that we as human beings are not multitaskers? All that happens is, our, energy, is, is our, our attention changes, but we don't multitask. We don't have the ability to do that. So with the checklist that Rudy has given you, pick what has to start in order. Work on it in the morning from 7 to 9, and where you leave off, get ready to pick up the next morning, and what you're going to find is you're going to start implementing and executing at a very, very fast rate to move these things along. The other thing is, don't wait until it's 100% ready to go. Get it to 75 or 80% and start launching and work on it while it's there. Okay? And that's gonna make a big, big difference in the execution and implementation of the things that you do. So after you have spent your morning, you have not looked at your emails, you haven't looked at the news, you haven't done anything else, you own the morning. Then, at 9 o'clock or 8.30, when that time is, you can start going to work and let the day go through. Because you're going to have a balance of working on your business and then working in your business. The next part of this is, I, I want you to really challenge yourself to have a time at the end of the day, at the day, end of the day, when you're done working. You just stop. So in my day, I stop at 6 o'clock. I just stop. And things still get done the next day. Because you're going to take from 5.30 to 6 and you're going to sit down and say, what wins did I have today? What challenges did I have today? What has to be implemented tomorrow? And you're going to get your day planned before you even hit it. You know, planning your day the night before is important because your subconscious can work on it. 
And you're, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice a confidence that starts to take over to where now, every single day when you wake up, you're waking up with a plan. You're waking up with the day that you own. And at the same time, you're implementing and executing the things that you have to get done. The difference between the average realtor who does four deals a year and everybody that's in the platform is execution and implementation. And the beauty of it is, you've got the systems there. Did you see all the stuff that Todd brought to our attention? It was absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Everything that you need to implement is already a plan that Craig has already set up, that all you have to do is copy it, tweak it, set it up, and literally go. Fast implementers and copiers. But really think hard about how you spend your day. Really think hard about who you are. Get clarity. Understand your passion. Understand what your goal is. Understand what your end game is. And simply start working towards it. But don't let anybody take that from you. Own your morning. Plan your day. Work on your business daily. And then recognize what the execution, the implementation, and by paying attention to that, is going to do for you as you start to move forward in your real estate career. I wish everybody here just amazing success. Uh, look, you're, you're with, I mean, he's the energizer bunny, <laughs> right? And I don't, think, I don't think you could have put yourself in a better position for success. Because look at what he's doing. I mean, you're here tonight at the conference talking about checklists and implementation, not because he wants to lie in his pocket, but because he wants you to be the best you can be. That's pretty special. That's pretty special. And all of you deserve to be the best that you can be. Because whatever option you have. We are in a very noble profession. Do you know that home is the second most emotional word in the English language next to mother? If any of you have ever raised children in a home and moved out of that home, because Ann and I have done it two or three times, when we leave that house, we cry. We don't cry because it's two by fours. We cry because we saw the lines on the wall where the kids were a certain height. See, what you have to appreciate is that within the walls of a home, is a place where people build their values, their principles, and anything that they feel that they can control. When they walk out the door, well, that's all. That's how important home is. That's why it's the largest financial and emotional investment that people are going to make. So not only do you have the ability to build something great, not just for yourself, but for the people that you serve and your families, but you're really doing it in a way that few people have the privilege to do. So carry on. And I think I'll just quit talking because otherwise I think I can just keep going. <laughs>